So this is, this is not the most fun news to wake up to today. Blizzard published this blog post called StarCraft 2 Update for October 15, 2020, a couple of hours ago. Now the real meat and potatoes of this blog post is the paragraph right over here in the middle. It reads as follows. We're going to continue supporting StarCraft 2 in the same manner as we have with our previous long-standing games such as Brood War, focusing primarily on what our core and competitive communities care about most. What this means is that we're not going to be producing additional for-purchase content such as commanders and war chests, but we will continue doing season rolls and necessary balance fixes moving forward. On that last note, we're not planning a Q4 balance update given that we did one a few months ago, but as always, we do plan to continue doing them as needed in the future future. StarCraft 2 Esports, which is part of the highest echelon of professional competitive gaming, will also continue going strong as it has been through our partners ESL and GSL. This is, yeah, it's, I mean, not entirely unexpected, but it still sucks. So here's the thing. Essentially what this comes down to is that StarCraft 2 is now going to be moving in with the other classic games that Blizzard has, like for example Brood War, where they do occasionally patch the game and they do introduce some changes every once in a while, but it's going to be extremely minor and the game as it is right now is basically what we're going to get. I mean, there's going to be balance changes if it's needed. Uh, there's probably going to be new maps as well. Obviously, I'm assuming the mutation missions and whatnot will continue for co-op, but as it is... This is basically it. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. I, I immediately saw a lot of people reaching out and asking me if this is the end for StarCraft 2. Um, I don't think so. There's a couple of things that I would like to discuss. But yeah, this this whole thing, while not, not unexpected, like I said, it's, it's really unfortunate. So there's a couple of things in here that give some people a lot of hope. Like, for example, this paragraph. We know some of our players have been looking forward to some things uh, we're moving away from, but the good news is that this will change, or this will free us up, rather, to think about what's next, not just with regard to StarCraft 2, but for the StarCraft universe as a whole. A lot of people are reading this little paragraph over here as if a StarCraft 3 announcement is on the horizon. I personally don't think so. Um, I know quite a few people that have worked on StarCraft 2 and it seems like pretty much all of them no longer work at Blizzard. If you're planning on releasing a future RTS and you have all of the best people, you know, that have produced RTS games in the past working at your company, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to let go of them. Obviously, that doesn't mean that there's never going to be a StarCraft 3, but I highly doubt it, you know, anytime soon. We do know that in the past there was a... Um, what was it? Like the, the Nova game? Like the, the basically the StarCraft first-person shooter? Um, I'm not entirely sure if that one is ever going to happen because that project has been cancelled twice. I'm sure that they will, you know, attempt producing another game in the StarCraft universe. But if it is, or if there ever will be another game in the StarCraft universe, I highly doubt that it's going to be a real-time strategy game. Which is probably what you and me, that have been watching this game for a long time, playing this game for a long time... Um, are looking for. So where does this leave StarCraft 2 and more specifically where does it leave one versus one, right? Especially the competitive scene. Where where does that go from here? So at the beginning of this year we learned that Blizzard had signed a multi-year deal with ESL and GSL and I believe DreamHack was in there as well although I don't really know the specifics. Um, long story short, ESL and GSL have been in charge of the competitive, you know, StarCraft 2 seasons since the beginning of this year. And honestly, that's been going extremely well. We don't have the World Championship Series anymore like we did. Basically, that was organized by Blizzard in the past. Um, but they've basically outsourced that entirely to their partners. And we know that 2020, 2021 and 2022 are, at least from what I understand, paid for, right? So... The, the I don't know exactly to what extent, but we know that those seasons are going to be happening. So for at least the next two years after this year, uh, we are going to be fine as far as the competitive seasons go. Now, what exactly happens after that? That's kind of the question. Now, that was always up in the air. It's not like this blog post really changes anything, you know, regarding that. That was always, uh, you know, up, up to interpretation, I suppose. Um... I secretly hope, obviously, that Blizzard does decide to continue supporting this scene after that year as well. What you got to keep in mind is that that costs a lot of money. And essentially, without, you know, the war chest sales and without, uh, you know, the, the co-op commander sales, there is very little incentive to do so, at least from a business point of view, other than loyal customer bases, right? 
Um, so say they do have a, another StarCraft game on the horizon or another strategy game or something along those lines, it makes sense, obviously, to invest a little bit of money every year. Um, I, I say a little bit of money, we're talking millions here, but um, uh, yeah, for a company that size, it's it's relatively small. Um, maybe maybe they will they will yeah make make the um, decision to continue supporting Starcraft 2 in 2023 and beyond as well but obviously that's still quite a while away odds are I, I think it's about 50 50 odds are that is gonna happen odds are also that that is not gonna happen if it doesn't happen what exactly would I expect uh, happens at that point right so at least from what we've seen in Warcraft 3 and Starcraft Brood War, it seems like those scenes are still doing relatively well. But the amount of people that are making a living from those games is very small. Most of the people that make a living from, say, like, for example, Warcraft 3 or Starcraft Brood War, um, they are the top level guys, obviously, right? So they win a lot of tournaments and they get team salaries and all that. But everyone below that top, right, is, is basically just doing it as like a part-time job. And that... That's obviously going to hurt the competitiveness of the game a lot because it does mean that there is pretty much zero incentive for any pro gamer to actually get started, which means that we're going to become the boomer game over time, right? We're going to be uh, the boomers of the esports industry over time. So I don't really know exactly where that's going to go in the future. Uh, it's not all doom and gloom, but there certainly is a little bit of doubt in my mind. Now, I guess we're going to be fine for the next two years. Um, and because of that, obviously, I'm not going to go anywhere. The competitive scene in StarCraft 2 is completely dependent on pro gamers, right? Like without pro gamers, without competitors, obviously you're not gonna be able to really have a competitive scene. So what will those competitive players do over the course of the next couple of years? I think there's probably three options. First off, they can stay, right? They can stay and keep playing StarCraft II as long as it makes sense to them. Um, I can imagine the top guys will stay for the foreseeable future just because their contracts obviously are still you know, since they're part of a team, their contracts are still up. Um, they will also still make good money, especially in 2021 and 2022. After that, though, maybe some of them will stay, um, especially, obviously, if Blizzard continues supporting the scene. If not, I can imagine quite a few of them will leave. Some of them will probably get a, a quote-unquote regular job or will go to university or something along those lines. I can imagine, however, that a lot of them will jump ship to another game as well. And the question is, what game will that be, right? So... When it comes to... I've pretty much played all the RTS games that have come out over like the last decade. Um, StarCraft 2 is far and away the best. It's very difficult to make a game as good as StarCraft 2, especially when it comes to strategy games, because I always compare them to SC2 or, for example, to Warcraft 3. It's very difficult to make a game uh, up to that point. Now, is it is it impossible? Definitely not. Do I think that there is a significant audience out there for strategy games? Yes. Um, for example, like that new Mike Morheim company, right, that, that just recently was announced. Um, it has a couple of, you know, very old school and very experienced RTS developers, like for example, Dustin Browder, uh, working at that company. I secretly hope that they decide to make a game in the RTS genre because they have the experience, they have the manpower, they obviously know that there is going to be a market out there. The real question is for any company, I guess, in 2020 is whether or not that, that audience is big enough. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's another, like another alternative, right? Like I, I'm going way off track here of what I was going to talk about, but it's, it's a little bit unfortunate. It's a little bit unfortunate. So there it is. Am I too concerned? Not really. Am I too surprised? Not really either. But I am curious to see where this game is going to be, especially like two years from now. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section of this video. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile and I'll see you once again in the next one.